Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm Ana Jimenez, uh, I'm currently the program manager at Tudor Group. And today I'll be talking about uh, inner source within open source initiatives. So let's get started. Um, so first of all, a little bit of myself. I was previously working at Viteria, uh, that are also members from Inner Source Commons. I spent there more than three years helping organizations in their Inner Source and Open Source Metrics journey. I recently moved as an OSPO program manager at Sudo Group. Um, I, one year ago, I finished my master thesis in data science, I'm, and I'm also involved in several communities such as Chaos, Sudo Group, of course, Inner Source Commons, DevRel Collective, or DevRel Spain. So um, I just want to make this a really quick introduction. I just wanted to make sure uh, you know the different steps we'll be talking about today. First of all, um, the motivation of why doing this talk. Also, I will briefly explain some of the OSPO journeys and the different st stages that organizations can follow. Uh, introducing OSPO accelerators that we will uh, see in a while what's, what's that exactly, and of course, ways to collaborate uh, between ISPOs and OSPOs. Um, so, I know and I know a lot of the audience here knows what OSPOs are, but for those who doesn't know, I'm gonna just give you a quick introduction. So, um, digital transformation is forcing more organizations to be more open source forward, and a way to um, get involved in open source initiatives in a faster and secure way is creating OSPOs. Uh, think about OSPOs as this program inside our organization that can accelerate, accelerate the open source journey. And we are seeing during the last year that OSPOs is not just a, a niche, it's getting bigger and bigger and uh, we are seeing a lot of benefits. Uh, you can go and check the last OSPO survey that the Tudor Group and the Linux Foundation um, uh, did uh, for this year. That uh, where you can take, um, you can know a bit of this evolution of OSPOs and and where where is the new OSPOs uh, starting and the main challenges of uh, this new generation. So as I said, OSPOs are somehow the accelerators, uh, the open source accelerators for organizations and are this, um, can act as the linkage between the organizations and the open source existence. But today, I'm not here to talk about only OSPOs. I'm gonna to, I would like to talk about how inner source uh, can be uh, part of, of these OSPO initiatives. So I'm going to be focusing on the organization side, right? Because when starting an OSPO, um, we need to, to have some order. We need to bring um, some order into chaos. And from my perspective, there are two criteria uh, that, we, that organizations need to move forward uh, before starting an OSPO. The first one is build a safe environment. So these are related with compliance and policies. And the second one is about building a supportive environment. So that's about education. So you need to meet these two criteria before moving forward. And these two criteria are happening inside the organization. We are not talking about um, the open source ecosystem at all. We are talking about how to uh, bring those policies, this con open source compliance and this education, this developer education um, to the inner community before moving forward. So uh, these are the different stages that an OSPO can face. So the first one starts with recognition. And I've seen some people that uh, the recognition starts from the inner source team that says, hey, we, we need to move forward. And then it's when the OSPO start. Uh, also has to start with the legal and engineering, but in somehow there's a lot of inner um, work 
before starting to get involved in open source ecosystems actually. And saying that, now it's not surprising to see that one of the questions we ask in the survey, like what are the primary responsibilities of the open source programs? Uh, the first two are related with fostering an open source culture within a, on, an organizations that are a lot of, that has a bill to do with inner source and maintaining open source license compliance reviews and oversight. And also there was a tremendous topic around inner source in OSPOCOM. And saying that, um, my impression here is when, when we build a new initiative, let's say OSPOS, uh, here's what happens like, oh, we need to start from a scratch. We don't have anything, but um, it can be different. Um, we can, there are a lot of assets that we can reuse. So there, there is one saying that is don't create, reuse. And this is something that um, from the OSPO perspective, we can take from inner source. So if your company has ever started into the inner source as a way to promote um, open source collaborations, there's a lot of things that uh, we can reuse uh, as from inner source assets and turn it into open source. And for that, this can be inner source can be an OSPO accelerator. So uh, the same way open OSPOs are open source accelerator, inner source can also be a way to accelerate OSPOs. But there are other accelerators. We have in-house initiatives such as inner source assets. And we also have external initiatives that can be from neutral players such as foundation to private organizations such as consultancy firms. All of them are adding value to OSPOs and are accelerating um, these initiatives and move faster from one stage to another. Um, and you can see this in the different stages. Uh, I've divided this between uh, well, when the OSPO is it's still young, so you're still in the recognition, compliance, and education focus. And then there are the more matures where they just um, understand all these stages and move to the actually uh, engagement and leadership that is not so common because most of the OSPOs right now are really my, uh, early stage OSPOs and they're still in, the, in this part of education, compliance, recognition, where inner source can be really helpful. Um, I was also wanted to share uh, more detail about the OSPO accelerators, uh, the, for the external ones, because I think there are different ones. Uh, there are uh, the naval type, the guide type, and the facilitator. And I wanted to divide it into, depending on the focus area. So there are certain accelerators that has expertise on a specific industry. For instance, those communities uh, that are, uh, ex has expertise on finance or expertise on um, government or expertise in um, automotive. There are other, there are guides that have expertise on OSP adoption in general, and there are the facilitators that are expertise on a specific subject. For instance, open source metrics, open source compliance that can help to move forward in these stages. Uh, these are just one example and of course it's, there are many more. I just wanted to uh, have like a VCR um, image of what I'm trying to explain. And just to say, um, these are not exclusive. They might be hybrids. They nurture each other. They define a path and they can work collabor col uh, in, in a collaborative way. And one of the ways uh, we're trying to achieve at the Twitter group is building OSPO Institute. So it's a OSPO program that aims to work in collaboration across these communities and uh, by working together, get a better OSPO experience. Um, these are some of the closing remarks. Uh, don't create, reuse, and think about these OSPO celebrations as a way to improve policy recommendations. Uh, this is what Tutor Group is about, some of the resources we're, we're building around. And, and that's all. Um, I'll be here for any questions you may have. Thank you so much and see you. Bye-bye.